Hi, I'm Dave from Ten Commandments Models. Welcome to our quick and easy guide to a range of Zeller rolling roads. Over the next couple of minutes, we're going to be running through the rolling roads, explaining how they work, and showing you how to get them connected up to your controller and get your trains running. Full contact details and all our product information can be found on our website, tencommandmentsmodels.co.uk. So let's take a closer look at the rolling roads. All our units are available for various scales and are suitable for use with either DC or digital DCC control. And here you can see the various units. Small one obviously here for N gauge. A much larger unit for O gauge. And our most popular scale, double O. The rolling mode is simply a cradle that allows your locomotives to run without the need for a circuit or track to run upon. This is achieved by resting your locomotive wheels on brass roller bearings and you can see there's a number of these held in the base unit. These could be easily adjusted to accommodate whichever configuration of locomotive wheels you're using at the time. And here you can see the individual roller brackets, small one obviously for the N-gauge, double O, larger O-gauge, and how the wheels rest on the roller brackets. So let's look at electrical connection. This is the same regardless of whether you're using DC or DCC control and should be regarded just simply like wiring up a piece of track. Each unit comes with two small connecting plugs. These are simple screw connections for your wires and these should be connected to track feeds from your controller. Once you've connected your wires up, it's a simple case of popping them into the holes in the end bars and you can see them here. It's a small hole next to the steel rod. These are a nice tight push fit once it's in there, it gives you a good, solid electrical connection. Power can now be transferred down the side steel bars and via side small steel rods into the rollers and your locomotive hole is ready to roll. We'll now adjust the brackets to accommodate a locomotive. And here we're simply using a set of three to accommodate a small 060 tank engine. With a slight adjustment. We can move on to accommodate other larger locomotives. For here, we're using two sets of three to accommodate a class 56 diesel. At this point, you might want to consider where you're going to situate your rolling load. If you have a second controller that you can dedicate to for use with your load, then you may want to mount it permanently on your workbench. If that's the case, we'd recommend applying a couple of small pieces of double-sided tape to the underside of the plastic bars and fixing it down firmly. If you are going to use the same controller you would normally use with your layout, it you may require to keep your rolling load portable. If that's the case, make sure it's on a flat level surface before you start using it. So having done all of that, we're now ready to start using our rolling load. Ours should be applying gradually. Slowly at first, and speed up as required. Your rolling load can now be used for a variety of tasks. You may simply have a locomotive that you haven't seen one for a while. All new locomotives should be run in prior to use. Please refer to the manufacturing instructions for specific guidelines on this. And if you use DCC control, your rolling load can be used as your programming track. I've been Dave from Ten Commandments Models. Hope you've enjoyed our quick and easy guide to our Zelda rolling loads. Be sure to tune in and watch the rest of our guides. Thanks for watching.